So I thought today we'd talk about part two of the uh, stop and go or walk stop walk robot. Um, in this case I have, uh, I'm going to show you also up on the computer, I've made a, a body, mechanically linked arms. The body is not secured on there, it can be removed because I haven't designed the head and the function that's going to happen up in the head. But first let's go ahead and start with the uh, stop walk and the arm motion part and we'll talk about all of that. So this part has come up and it'll drop down like that. And it's up again. We've added some uh, flashing lights in the chest. And basically, let's get the camera where I can see what's on screen. I've left the uh, battery back open at the moment. Probably make a battery door for that eventually. The on off switch is there. But I wanted to uh, not only mechanically link the arms with the walking action, but I wanted to do it in a safe way so that if the arms are moved, it won't break anything. And in order to do that, you need to make a friction clutch, and we're going to talk about that. And like I said, the body isn't secured on at the moment, it's just kind of sitting there. So I can remove it. There's some wires that connect the LEDs in this half to that half. But um, you can see in there in the arm, I decided to just print a large gear. And even though I only needed a couple of teeth to make it move, I figured for alignment reasons I've got the room. It's just printed complete gear then. I never have to think about it when I'm assembling it. And this piece here is a separate piece which glues to the top of the legs that we built in the last video and put just the three teeth that I need there to move back and forth to make the arm move. Let's um, let's take a look at the files and talk about some of this in more more detail. Like so. Alright. Get up there. Let's get uh, you aimed more at the screen. For our little slideshow. It's just the easiest way for me to do this. So, as far as um, 3D CAD programs go, one I like to use is called Design Spark Mechanical, and that's because uh, you've got to go back almost six years ago when it came to free CAD programs there weren't as many choices as there are now. I know it, right now everyone's jumping on board with Simplify 3D. In fact for the last two years they've been jumping on board with Simplify 3D. I just don't feel like learning another new CAD program when I already know this one. And even uh, Design Spark Mechanical, this one, um, has upgraded They've gone to newer versions of this same free CAD program. I haven't even downloaded those and learned them. This one is considered an outdated um, version, and these files aren't even compatible with the new one, so I can't even share these files with other people. I, I saved them not only as the old Design Spark Mechanical file, master file, but also as an STL, and then, of course, once it's an STL, I can share it with whoever. But uh, this is the program that I learned to use, and I just don't feel like learning another program when this one still works for me. So here's the uh, body half, the left body half. And of course, there was no reason to design both the left and right because you can just mirror this part to make the right. When I mirror it for the right, I just simply remove the uh, switch because I didn't need a switch on the right side as well. And uh, enter the text in later when I save it as an STL. Where I have the on off written on there. But um, I think I just wanted to show you the program. I design all the parts for all my robot projects in Design Spark Mechanical the gears, the shafts, the feet, whatever. And this is basically what it looks like. Uh, when you're going to start in the program, you start with a page that looks like this. And they always try to get you to upgrade. I always refuse because none, none of my old files can be opened or used anymore. And I, plus, I probably would have to learn some new terminology. So the next thing you do is you go here and you say New. And it's going to give you a grid and I put it on Plan View. And if you were going to design something, then you can go up here and you start 
grabbing what it is you're going to do first. Like if you were going to make a wheel or a pulley or something, you'd bring it out and you'd specify. I can either drag it to the size I want, or I can just click and then type in the size that I want. Like that, and make it. It's like almost all the other drawing programs. Once you've made something, this isn't anything but a circle, um, you can then get out of that mode and you can do some extrusion on it. Spin it a bit sideways, go to the pull button, pull it out however thick you wanted that part to be. Let's say I want that to be four millimeters thick. And then, boom. So it's, it's, it's much like all the other programs in these respects. You can then go back and punch holes, add teeth, do whatever it is you need to, to do with these things. Okay, let's get out of Design Spark because this isn't a tutorial on using it. Since most of you are going to learn Simplify 3D more than likely. Um, what else? Pictures. Okay, so when I was talking about being able to move the arm freely, this is the gear that I'm driving with that leg gear in there. This is a rubber O-ring which I'm going to set on this this part of the gear, which will go up inside this. There's a back side of this is hollow sits over that, a screw from the back side will tighten the two together and basically the rubber o-ring adds friction between the two. So depending on how tight you make that screw you can then, and this end of this post is going to get glued up in the arm, you'll see all that coming up, but depending on how tight you make the screws, how much friction there is between this piece and this piece, so you can move the arm and yet it has enough traction to uh, here we go. See here, you can see the hollow part of the caps getting ready to come down on there. Then I got a screw in there that screw the two parts together. And basically, this whole thing gets shoved into the inside of the arm. This would be the right side of the body. And this whole arm gear assembly is going to go into that hole. And then the arm gets glued onto the shaft that sticks through from the outside. So now the whole thing will turn freely. Or if I hold the gear, I can still move the arm without breaking anything. This piece I'm holding up in the air, but you can see here's where it's going to, uh, there's a glue tab area that forces it to glue in the correct position down here on, into the leg. So as the leg moves, this gear, which is set on a radius from here, will engage with the arm gear and move the arm gear back and forth. So here it is glued on, it's sticking up. Just another angle of it. I don't know if I have many more pictures. Yeah, here we with the body with it on, but you've already seen the robot, so you don't need to see that. So let's close out the little slideshow pictures. And this was the previous video. Uh, in that case, I was calling it the walk, stop, walk. This was really like, it's really part two, but I called it part one because at this point it became a robot. Before that, I was presenting it just as a gearbox showing the the function of the the ramp control that does the walk and stop thing and I actually called it part one that was because at that point I wasn't sure if I was going to do anything more with that gearbox makes it kind of confusing it wasn't a robot at that point once I decided to make it a robot <laughs> I probably should have just called this part two And then, both before any of those were done, I did a whole video just showing the old mechanical uh, ways of doing sequencing. Um, some with cams, some with this rotating ramp lift system. And uh, I paused the video in this particular spot right here because as the ramps separate and this gear comes up and engages this gear to do a lift function, the gear will drive itself around till it gets to this open place. Well, in most toys, they get around to that open place and it just it just sits there and snaps back and forth on it. The it runs out of teeth and this is, keeps turning. So every time it, another tooth comes by, it just kind of sits there and rocks a little bit. And the, you'll see that when you see the doors open and guns come out and they're kind of shaking. Well, that's the end of a tooth gear rattling against another tooth gear. That causes a lot of a lot of wear. So in this larger box, what they did to get away from that problem was they actually took this gear that's rotating, and instead of that shaft right there just going through a small hole, it's in a slot, a slot that faces towards this little gear that's driving it. 
and it's on a, there's a spring pulling on it as well. And when it drives around to that point where, where normally it would sit there and chatter, because that's slotted, it, the gear can actually drop in away from the teeth and it gets captured on a smooth area where there are no teeth. So there's no chattering. It climbs all the way around, locks in and just sits there smoothly waiting for the gear to drop back down and then there's a spring return right here so it snaps back into the same position. So this is slightly more advanced to uh, stop the horrendous gear wear that happens. Most of these toys that don't do it this way yes this small gear wears and yes the big gear wears but all the other metal gears in that same toy or plastic depending on when the toy was made are also wearing and they figure the whole toy is going to wear out about the same time anyway so they don't worry about it. In my case in this one where I'm thinking about well not thinking I'm going to use a similar type mechanism to raise and, and lower this and this function is going to do something up in the head which I haven't even decided what the head's going to look like or what I'm going to do. I mean I could make a top of the head that opens and like a missile comes out or I could do a head splitter. There's a lot of the toy robots where the heads open and you see a different head inside the head. Um, could be a visor over the eyes, make a visor lift and lower. I'm going to do all those things but none of them are going to be particularly demanding on this. So I think the plastic um, gear teeth will probably be just fine because I'm not going to ask it to do a whole lot of heavy lifting if you will. Anyway we'll find out when we get to whatever part this will be. Part 3, part 4, whatever you want to call the head. I don't know. I thought I'd give you an update on the uh, body and the arms and I guess I guess I should upload those to Thingiverse so I'll put a link in the description down below or if I don't make it there then I'll post one in the uh, topic section for a link for the body and, and arm parts in case any of you are interested in building this part.